Hey guys, Lucas from iExplore here. So today we're going to explore Shinjuku, which is you know one of my favorite places to shoot. I've shot here countless times, a bunch of times on this channel. And actually today's video is sponsored by Viltrox, which is the maker of this 85 1.8 millimeter lens for Z-mount that they very generously sent to me for my pleasure and enjoyment. So today we're going to shoot with it. I've actually shot with this one a couple of times already, one or two days last week, and I had a good time using it. So I'm going to talk more in detail about my impression of this lens. But you know, we're not a review channel, so this isn't going to be like a technical review. I'm not going to compare it to the, um, the, you know, the Nikon 85 1.8 that exists, because I've never shot with that lens, so I have no idea how it actually stacks up. That's not the point. The point is just to talk about this lens and you know, share my thoughts on it as we explore Shinjuku. All right, so let's go. I find with a lens like, like this, like an 85, like a prime for street photography, you gotta kind of pick your shots because it's sort of, you know, the place where you can stand to get the shot from is, you know, you gotta be pretty far away. So if I get too close, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work, right? Field of view is too narrow. So I'm actually looking quite far away from myself for potential stuff, like across the street, quite down the street, and also above somewhere for uh, interesting shot ideas, potential subjects. Yeah, that's nice, but very straightforward shot. Okay, maybe this guy across the street here is cool in his little shop. Yeah, it's okay. It's kind of simple but neat. So I'm using the uh, the tracking focus feature as I always do when I'm doing street photography, where you have to press uh, OK or the I have it set to front button here, and then I get a little you know track subject tracking uh, box, and I can using the back button track my subjects. And it's working really well with this lens, very smoothly. Let's keep going this way. Ooh, okay. So now. It's the same scene, but from this angle is better because that LED sign is very far from here, but this is LED sign that's reflecting on this dude. The thing is the car is sort of in the way. It's across the street. It'd be nice if this car was in here, but maybe I can do it from here. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, and now also the flicker is come becoming an issue a little bit because the LEDs are flickering. So I'm going to go to manual and my shutter speed is on a 60th. And so I don't need f2.8 anymore, I'm going to go to f4. And there we go, and I'm just going to wait for a really nice LED signage here. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like how these blue LEDs reflect on stuff. Let me get a little bit closer. Try another perspective. Now I'm getting kind of the, the maximum distance of what works with an 85. Come on, blue. There's red, white, and blue LEDs. And I really like the blue ones. Okay. Eh, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, it's not the most amazing photo in the world, but I quite like it. It's cool. Okay. Nice. I left it on f4 and uh, what do you call it? An aperture mode. So I'm in, I mean manual mode. So I'm going to switch back to f2.8 in aperture mode now because we're uh, shooting something with a little, little bit more motion potentially. Be ready for the action. Something I've always loved in this area is this big 
neon sign up on the roof of this building. And actually, a longer lens like this is good for shooting something like this because it's obviously a little far away. Yeah, nice tight full frame shot. Simple shot, but it's a beautiful neon sign. And neon is slowly disappearing around Tokyo. One by one, these cool signs are just vanishing. So even having a really, to me, having just this basic shot of it, I think is kind of nice to have for my, my archive of neon. So there's this smoking space here behind me. So I'm gonna go behind it there, there's a little passage, and we'll see if we can shoot silhouettes of people through this blue glass and then with the city lights behind. So I'm looking through this glass layer. So, um, yeah, but full disclosure, guys, I did come here a couple nights ago and I shot this. So I had this idea already in mind. I haven't shot from this angle, this smoking area, I think ever. So it was a new idea. And I did have this lens that other night. So I could show one of those photos. And then also the photos I just shot, I think might be even better, better subject. So yeah, this is, this is really cool. I think this is the kind of scene that plays to the strengths of, of a lens like this one. Where it's, it's kind of long, 85. I do have control over my distance to some degree. I get a little closer, a little farther, I can move around. And there's a bunch of stuff in the foreground, the railing, the glass and everything. And then the background is nice too. And this is where the 1.8 helps because that stuff is still in the frame, but with the shallow depth of field, it's kind of messily sort of, you know, it becomes abstract. So that my subject is there, but surrounded by the rest of the environment in a kind of abstract sense. So I'm quite happy with the result there. It's a good subject too. He was posing with, his cigarette, like he was kind of contemplating it, like it's a glass of wine or something. It's kind of funny. So in terms of autofocus, this is a very challenging scene because of all those layers that I was just describing. So you got the glass, you got you know the people, and so much going on. And um, it's doing okay. I mean, I don't think this is a, a fault of the lens or the camera in particular. This is just a hard scene to shoot through this blade glass. So sometimes the focus would uh, nail it. Sometimes it would go a little autofocus. So I had to manually focus. This is where. Um, the, I could talk about this, I guess, like I should mention, the, the focus throw is really nice and smooth. But one thing, and I think this is true for all these kind of a new electronic style lenses, whether it's this one or the Nikon ones, doesn't matter, is you don't have a, an infinity stop. And I miss that. I like having an infinity stop on my manual focus, you know, traditional manual focus lenses. Infinity, and it stops, and then I can go the other way. So I kind of know how far I focus to here. You know, you're turning and you're kind of like, okay, I guess that's the end, and then I come back to find my sweet spot. So, little thing about ergonomics there. But overall, the AF was doing a pretty good job. I did need to intervene a, a couple of times there. Uh, but in any case, in the end, I, got, I did get the shot, which is the most important thing. Here there's some potential for some shots. There are these reflective bricks on this building. Okay. And they bend the light in an interesting way. The reflection, I, I should say. So maybe it's possible to shoot something like with the bricks on one side. Mm, or maybe it's actually too, I'm too close, that's the thing. I'm too close with the 85 here. Let's try from this side. Okay, yeah, here we go, here we go. Maybe I can make it work here. Okay. 
Okay, I think it works, but it's not that interesting. So scratch that hole, we'll just keep going. We'll keep going. Okay? Pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> this is more of a, a why. Oh, 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 maybe I spoke too soon. Hold on, maybe from here. Okay, hold on a second. So I was. I was just about to give up on this spot. I was telling Axel, like, forget it. Let's, let's just cut and move on because this wasn't good. But actually, from right here, this is exactly why you got to work the scene. Sometimes you got to call it quits. You think, okay, it's not going to work. But sometimes you just got to spend a little more time. So right here it works because of this bright light creates silhouettes. And then the bricks, these, these individual mirrors, distort that pole in a very interesting way. And the whole scene is distorted in a cool way. So. Ooh, yeah, wow. So this is definitely the kind of scene where you gotta wait a while to get something really good. And it's also I was again manually focusing again no no criticism here of the camera or the lens or whatever any camera would struggle focusing on this because really nothing is sharp over there even at perfect focus it's out of focus because the the mirror itself is distorting things so I had to just kind of focus myself and find that sweet spot and again uh, just to reiterate like it would be cool to have an infinity stop on these lenses just because my usual focusing technique is where I'm, I'm not sure if I'm front focused or back focused so I'll, I'll rack it to infinity and then work slowly, work my way back until I get the, the focus point that I want. I guess I can get used to it. It's just a matter of changing my technique a little bit. No, no need to rack to infinity. Just start trying to find the focus point from where I am. Also, I'm still on 1.8. Remember I said, oh, let's just keep it wide open? Maybe not for this shot. Maybe this shot, I want more depth of field. So I'm going to go to F4. There's also plenty of light in this shot. So I don't need to be wide open. Yeah, and that'll be much better. Mm. Maybe I even already have the the keeper that I'm after. I mean, there's one there's one in here that I really like. I got a little bit fascinated with this bag that this girl's carrying that has like a checkered pattern and then she's walking over these stripes of the crossing. I thought that was a cool combination. So go right down the middle here. See what we can find. Here we go. So there's a couple of cars parked over here with a lot of lights and stuff around. This might be kind of cool. Now here I don't need a uh, fast shutter, so I'm going to slow it down and I'm going to go to f2.8. Yeah, it's kind of neat, abstract detail of the car. Always got to check there's nobody in the car because sometimes there is this person in there I'm not photographing them, I'm photographing the car, but they are all freaked out, like, what, what is this guy doing? Oh, here we go. This has potential. I mean, they're not the most interesting shots in the world, but I think they'll illustrate my point of what I'm going for when I'm shooting this kind of stuff. I like these abstract bendings of light on the body work of a car. Actually, I mean, it's a you know, rudimentary shot to just shoot down the street. But, you know, 
with an, with an interesting subject it could work. That was a nice, nice chance for the autofocus system to strut its stuff. It did a very good job of tracking that guy on the bike coming quickly towards me. All right, guys, so that's it for today. We're going to wrap it up here. Um, I got to say, I had fun using it, but like I've already mentioned, I have used it before a few times, so it wasn't a shock to me that I had fun. This lens was great. Um, and, you know, I mean, in general, I like 85s. 85s are fun to use for a number of reasons. I like how compact they are. You know, usually I use my 70, 70 to 200 when I'm doing telephoto, but that is a beast of a lens. It is kind of heavy. You know, it's hard to carry. This is much more comfortable and just easy, to, easy on the hands. And the results are great. I think, you know, like I said, I've shot with it, so I know the photos from tonight are going to turn out wonderful. And, um, yeah, so I can safely recommend this lens. So thank you, Viltrux, for sending it over and letting me use it. And I get to keep it, full disclosure, so this is uh, probably using, you'll probably be seeing it in future videos, that, you know, now and then, for sure. All right, so thanks for watching, guys, and remember always, challenge your eye.